How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob the Boy, and welcome to a hunter's guide to next Ramus loot. Next is coming. I'm excited. I know you're excited. More than anything else in classic, Nax is what I've been looking forward to revisiting since I never got to finish it in vanilla. So, as we always do with these loot guides, we'll go over non-boss drop items and we'll break it down boss by boss and finally go over our wonderful, beautiful Tier 3 Crypt Stalker set. But first, attunement real quick. Attunement is easy, but it's based on your Argent Dawn rep. If you're honored, it's going to cost you 60 gold, 5 arcane crystals, 2 nexus crystals, and 1 righteous orb. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Just farm some rep. Revered is not that bad at 30 gold, 2 arcane crystals, and 1 nexus crystal. If you're exalted, it's free. Nice. Alright, so now that we can get in Nax, let's take a look at trash drops. There's a lot of good trash mob drops in Nax, so you're probably going to see some trash clearing groups farming them. But unfortunately not a lot for Hunter. There is Harbinger of Doom. It's good, but it's really similar to Blessed Kiraji Poo. A very marginal upgrade over that if you're in a weird place in your gear progression that requires you to have 1% hit from a weapon. However, weapons are going to be pretty coveted in Nax when it starts, so it's unlikely you'll get this even if you're in that weird position, meaning this is something that's nice to have on hand, but you'll probably pick it up later in the Nax once the competition for it goes down. And one thing to note is there are a lot of one-handed weapons in Nax, so we will do a roundup of all of those later. And that's it for trash drops. Now if you don't know, Nax is split up into four wings before you can enter the final area with Cindy and KT. We'll start with the spider wing, sometimes called a rack and a quarter. A new Brecken doesn't actually drop anything for hunters. Unfortunate. After him, it's Grand Widow Fairlina, who also doesn't drop any hunter gear. And I know what you're thinking, time to riot, right? But thankfully, the last boss in the Arachna Quarter does drop some hunter gear, kinda. Makes my exna, may triple exna, this big spider drops kiss of the spider, and shit, this is a weird trinket. Trinkets are already weird for hunters thanks to being able to trinket swap. And attack speed. Attack speed gets really complicated for hunters, especially if you're melee weaving. If you're shooting too fast, melee weaving ends up being a DPS loss. We also have to keep in mind, hunters don't really want to rely on hit on their trinkets since we're be trinket swapping. As much as I want to like this trinket, I could not come up with any reasonable gear set that made it a DPS gain. And I simmed a shitload of things. Sad to say it, but we're likely to leave this one for the melee. There's also makes this fang, but again, we'll come back to that later with the other one-handers. Alright, Arachnum Quarter sucks, but that's no surprise. Spiders are gross. Moving on to the A-Bomb Quarter. Patchwork drops, finally, Band of Reanimation. This is a great ring. Straight upgrade over Ring of the God Slayer. We definitely want to pick this one up. Grobulus. He drops some Frost Resistance Shoulders. Icy Scale Spawners. Okay. And a gun. Hmm. Well, it looks cool, but I don't know who or what this is for. Gloth. So he drops Claymore of Unholy Might, which is worth mentioning mainly because of its cool acronym. But it's also really similar to Ashkandi, so it is good for melee weaving. But where this differs from Ashkandi is there are other better weapons for melee weaving in Nex and those aren't any harder to get. It's also a slight loss compared to Barb in most situations, so you won't want to swap that out for cool acronym Claymore. Thaddeus, the last boss in the A-bomb quarter, doesn't drop anything for hunters. He drops a really nice mace, but hunters are too sophisticated for maces. Let's move on to the Death Knight quarter. Instructor Resuvius here drops Iblis. And it's a pretty nice sword. We can definitely use it. Iblis is actually in a pretty similar situation to Harbinger of Doom. So again, we'll circle back to Iblis later. Gothic the Harvester. 
really edgy name, is next, and he drops a neck. Cytus Collar. This is a weird neck. It seems really nice, but it's itemized kind of strange. It's got a lot of stam, but that means a pretty big AP loss. Even I, if a car has more AP. Hell, even Mark of Forging has more AP. Potential use for PvP, but not something we're really going to be miffed about. And the four horsemen, last boys of the DK quarter. They drop Soul String, which looks dope as shit, but just isn't that great. If the DPS was a bit higher, it could be worth it. But with that DPS and speed, we just can't justify using it over Ashrithul, even as a troll. They also drop Corrupted Ashbringer. Now just looking at this, it's obvious. This is a hunter weapon. Every other class probably does not agree, but it is. However, we won't really use this, even for heavy melee weaving, the reason being there's an even more huntery weapon later on, and this is really coveted, so competition for it will be fierce. Lastly, Leggings of Apocalypse. So, I'm not sure how sought after these are for rogues, I assume ferals want them pretty bad, but these are not bad if you're going to melee weave. It's an incredibly small upgrade over Cripstalker for melee weaving and an extremely small downgrade when not weaving. Not a big deal, but if I don't mention it, every comment will be saying I forgot to mention these, so I mentioned these. Alright, on to the last wing, the plague wing, sometimes called the plowing. <laughs> that was dumb. Not the Plekbringer drops Cloak of the Scourge. This is actually not a bad cloak, really, but not something we're going to use as a hunter. If we really need a cape with hit as an intermediary piece of gear, hunter is unique in that it can easily get cloak of the unseen path from AQ20, and that's just quite a bit better for us. Noth also drops hatchet of sunder bone, which ain't bad, but again, we're going to do the one-handed weapon roundup since there's just so damn many of them. Hi again is up next, and he just drops more frost res with the icy scale cu icy scale. It's a lot of frost resistance, though. This brings us to Lotheb, and there's a reason we're doing plague quarter last. Band of unnatural forces. So, yeah, this is a really good ring. As far as hit rings go, this is the best one we can get being slightly better than the Exalted Brood Ring in nearly all cases. Thing is, the competition for this is going to be really high, and we have two other rings that are going to fit into our Biss. So this is sort of our wild card hit ring. When we need hit, it's good, but it's only slightly better than the Brood Ring. Now, what we mainly want from Lotheb, I have Nerub. Oh yeah! This is the best weapon in the game for hunter melee weaving. Second to none. If you're going to melee weave, you want this. And thankfully, no other classes are really going to try and take it. So it shouldn't be too difficult to grab. Even though Corrupted Ashbringer has a bit higher DPS, the stats on this are so good it more than makes up for it. Now it's not a massive upgrade over Barb, but it is still really nice. And it does look better than Barb, which is good because looks are everything. Alright, so that's the four wings down, meaning we can move up to Saffron. Shroud of Dominion. Again, another good cape, but it trails slightly behind Cloak of the Fallen God, unfortunately, just because of that agility scaling. Slayer's Crest. Yeah, this is what we want. This is a direct upgrade over our other passive trinkets like DFT and Eldritch Thalus. 100% we want to pick this up. If you have to shank warriors and rogues to get it, well, do what you have to do then, because there ain't no rules on the streets. <laughs> Saffron also drops his claw, which we will add to that one handed weapon roundup. So only the big frosty himself remains Kel'Thuzad. Obviously, the last boss of Vanilla is going to drop some dope shit, and he drops King's Fall. Again, we'll put that in the roundup. And Storm Rage's Talisman of Seething. I guess. KT stole this from Illidan, didn't know KT was in the yanking chains like that, but this is a really good necklace. Although it's not a huge upgrade over Prestors. 
and in a lot of cases we will need the hit from Prestors. This is a piece that's nice to have when we don't want the hit, but the competition for it is going to be really high. And it's not something we'll be using all the time, so we are most likely just going to be sticking with Prestors here. And now, the big one. What we really came here for. Nerubian Slave Maker. Just get it. If you need to chloroform the other hunters in your raid to get this, do it. It's worth it. This is the best ranged weapon in the game, and you should do literally anything you can to get it. It also even looks pretty damn cool. Hunter's getting a ranged weapon that's really good and looks really cool. I'm pretty sure this was the first time that happened in WoW. But seriously, it is incredible, and we do want it. Really bad. Now, before we can move on to Crypt Stalker, let's take a look at all those one-handed weapons we put off, because like I said, there is a sheer load of them. Harbinger of Doom, Makesna's Fang, Hatchet of Sundered Bone, Iblis, Blade of the Fallen Seraph, Claw of the Frostworm, and King's Fall. So, there's six good one-handed weapons next. We only need two. And they're all really good. Makesna's Fang is probably the worst, followed by Hatchet of Sundered Bone. And even then, those are an AP upgrade over Silithid Claw or Warblade. The reason I would avoid those two is the other four have one crit and one hit on them. That will let us get to nine hit easier without Biznix. At that point, those four become really, really close. King's Fall is the only one that pulls noticeably ahead. The best combo is going to be King's Fall and Iblis, but King's Fall is really sought after, like everything else KT drops. And Harbinger is so close to Ilbis while being a lot easier to get, so you'll probably have one of those. I'm pretty sure rogues don't want the claw since there's not a matching main hand fist weapon. That's probably the other easy one to get, meaning Harbinger and Claw is most likely what you can get without making all the melee butthurt, but really any combo of the four is going to be really good for your stat stick weapons. Alright, so that's all the boss drops, which brings us to our wonderful, beautiful tier 3 Crypt Stalker set. If you couldn't tell, it, it's amazing, which unfortunately means there's not a lot to say about it other than we want it. It does have some MP5, and the set bonuses are a little disappointing, but it doesn't have a bunch of spirit or resistances like our other sets. Just a shitload of agility while also having a lot of hit and crit. Look at that helm, damn! The shoulders and helm are good enough that it's now no longer worth wearing the old PvP ones for that set bonus. It's a great set, there's really not much more to it than that. Though we will go a little bit more in depth in the phase 6 bis of video. Now, how do we get the set because that's what this video is more about. It's a bit different than tier 2. It's kind of similar to ZG gear. You need rep, some trade goods like Arcanite, an item that drops from bosses in Nex, and some items that drop from trash in Nex. For instance, the boots take desecrated boots, that's the boss drop item, war torn chain scrap, that's the trash drop item, an Arcanite bar, and three Nexus crystals. You'll also need at least honored with AD. That's pretty annoying, I prefer just getting my gear when it drops. But the boss drop item is actually shared with our classes like the ZG ones. In Hunter's case, it's going to be shared with Druids and either Paladin or Shaman depending on your faction. That's not great, but at least we don't have to deal with Warriors, right? The boss drop items, which correspond to a specific piece of gear, also drop from specific bosses. So the boots can drop from Gothic, Gluth, and Resuvius. The belt from High again, Gluth and Noth. The shoulders, Grobulus, Patchwork and Gluth. Bracers, Feralina, Anubrecken and Gluth. The gloves only drop from Mexna. The helm only drops from Thaddeus. The legs only drop from Lotheb and the chest is only from the Four Horsemen. So those are the final bosses of each wing for those if you didn't pick up on that. And KT drops the ring. You don't need to do a quest for that one thankfully, it's just a drop. 
And with that, we've covered all the loot in Nex. A lot of nice shit in here. Be sure to let me know in the comments what gear you are most excited about here. I mean, I already know it's an Arubian Slave Maker, but I, you know, I still want to know. And get ready for the Phase 6 Abyss video that'll be up next week. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, like button, twat button, share button, all that other shit. They really do help the channel grow, and I really do appreciate each and every one I get. But that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching, and I will see you all for the next one.